let's talk about it how it kind of affects the london clubbing scene i guess because that might be of of area of interest for me personally and stuff that i talk about i think we've seen what it's done in terms of how it's ravaged um entire neighborhoods uh, countries especially in italy i watched a video recently now that kind of spoke about the damage it's caused in bergamo and um a lot of it obviously is kind of due to the fact that you know especially in those mediterranean countries a lot of the families live in one building right so on, on different levels so you might have a, a, a huge, a bigger density of older folk living in one street. So maybe the numbers are inflated a little bit. But the fact that, you know, these families were, you know, healthy and living and coping with their ailments, whatever they may be. Because a lot of people are like, oh, if you've got pre-existing conditions, it kind of affects you badly. And people are like a bit dismissive about it. But people who have preconditions, you know, if you hear of sportsmen saying that they always play injured, right? People always have some kind of ailment they're dealing with, whether they know it or they don't, right? Um, you just kind of get along with life because you don't want to, you know, rest on your rest on. You don't want to kind of waste your time thinking about things you can't necessarily change or whatever it may be. So to think that those elements that they were all right, that they were okay managing and coping with, have suddenly now accelerated the disease that they had no idea existed a couple of weeks ago is frightening. Especially because most of these people are um, mainstays of the family. They're the ones that hold it together, right? They might be disputing sections of the family people don't get along but you know the grandma the granddad is the one that kind of holds things down and makes sure you know people are talking and communicating they get around the table they eat they share some wine they hang out so for those people to go missing it's probably a bigger blow than some people would actually want to kind of you know really rationalize especially if you're one of the people that are like oh there's too many humans on the planet well let's take away someone from you that you love and you kind of cherish and see how you feel about it. there's too many humans on the planet it's such a weird way to look at the world but you know what can you do um so this so let's go into some club news from a resident advisor who do a good job of kind of rounding up some of the events that's happening um the article from resident advisor let's bring it up on here so it's a latest of what's kind of going on in the scene and how they're approaching it there's been a lot of um live streaming of dj sets and stuff which you know has been okay i've kind of done my one or two here and there but i've kind of just uploaded them as an audio thing onto soundcloud you can check that out i'll put it in the show notes for you to see if you want to listen to some of our mixes i've put together but there's been a lot of kind of memeing on the on the facebook pages about you know these sets being attended by one or two people not really people caring and maybe it's the fact that this might not be the best time to i don't know for performers or djs to kind of be pushing out live mixes probably the the kind of uh the sentiment in the world isn't for tap dancing or pump in the air or you know jumping around that like you don't care and stuff no one really wants that now maybe that's the reason why and maybe there is a little bit of a feeling of these artists being a little bit disingenuous i don't know from the customer side of it because i just i don't know i'm curious because i've seen a lot of the streams i've checked some of them out i think the defective one recently did quite some quite good numbers but you know they've probably got a little bit more of a general population audience i think a lot of people that listen to defective records aren't necessarily your quote-unquote hardcore dance music you know enthusiasts they are in some respects but they just represent you know the general kind of like you know bbc radio one sort of like house listener who kind of tune into a late night set at 10 p.m or something um so that's probably not a good example but i guess really hardcore electronic music fans especially the ones who are freelancing or it's just in general just everyday average day folk they might not be in the best mood to kind of hear you know surgeon complain about not having not be able to you know fly around the middle of central europe you know they don't really i don't know maybe that is i'm not too sure but the sentiment doesn't seem to be that great in terms of the mixes and stuff um i've seen a lot of the more macabre sort of like dark um gloomy mixes doing quite well people are like oh i'm I'm, rep- I'm kind of reflecting the times and playing all this kind of ambient you know um industrial post-apocalyptic sort of shit and that's connecting with people because people kind of maybe want to just like drown in their sorrows and kind of you know have a soundtrack to go along with it but i don't know so anyway, this is an article from a resident advisor said so the coronavirus latest um they kind of sum up some of the stuff that's happening so let's go through some stuff here uh march 23rd news um rainbow disco club are hosting a live stream event april 18th another one the day is now cancelled festival is supposed to take place from the first flight festival in chubu the lineup features deja nobu kenji takayama yoshinori haishi and more so the live sets are interesting right so essentially a lot of these things i think um defected records i don't think that was a festival that might have just been the thing they just did last minute i'm not too sure don't quote me on that um but essentially they're hosting them in like empty nightclubs 
in having the DJs come up and perform a set, right? I think the Defected Records, let me just actually try and see if I can get that one up. The Defected Records was quite interesting because I think they had everyone playing like a one hour or a two hour set. I think it was like a two hour set. Each person played and it kind of went from there. Um, that can work. I Don't get me wrong, but I don't know in terms of an experience for punters, unless you're... I guess unless you're working from home, you just want to have it on in the background and let your phone play out, maybe. Because I think some of them were live streamed on on Instagram and shit, and some of them did through YouTube. But okay, of course, it depends on what you're doing. If you've got a job where it requires your full attention, you might not want to have, you know, 120 BPM plus tunes playing in the background. You might just want to keep it a bit quiet. I'm not too sure, but let's just um, see if I can get this up on here. There's a defected record. Let's see if I can get up here. Defected records. It's like a little live stream thing they've done, but my thing is getting a bit crazy. Yeah, so this is the one live at that petted record. So this is the someone playing here. Just click them, doesn't matter who it is. This is Nelva Baptiste. Hope it loads up here. My computer's running a bit slow, so excuse this. To the few who are in but essentially you've got a couple side of the moment big shout to you and wherever you are in the world right now thank you so much for joining us my name's melbourne and i've got you for the next hour that, that obviously helps with the situation but i don't know it's something that obviously can get looked at future going down the line in terms of how you kind of interact with people but part of the reason why these things work in real in you know in a normal setting is because you get to especially like Tomorrowland, you get to see the cameraman go in the crowd and you get to spot, you know, if you're a creep, you get to spot a hot girl. If you're a dude, you get to spot that guy that's kind of gurning to the side. You get to see what people are wearing, the flags they've got, the signs. It's all quite cool to see, but just pointing a camera in the DJ as he's playing, it's a bit boring, isn't it, right? To be honest, you know, I play myself at a much lower level and I don't know, I couldn't think of anything less fun to do than staring at a DJ playing in an empty club. It's, it's sort of like, you know, would you want to, would you want to just stand there and watch an artist paint a mural all day long? Like, I know people do that when they go to Brick Lane. They see someone graffiti on the side of the street and they look for about five minutes. But then you just keep it moving because it's boring, isn't it? You want to see the work when it's done. You want to see it maybe in a setting of it being a celebration of the unveiling of this piece. You don't want to stand there and see the guy stenciling out the thing and obsessing over a line, whether it should go that way or that way. That's not fun. And I guess the same thing in this. Like, part of the reason why these experiences are interesting or they have some sort of a... Uh, cultural relevance is because they bring loads of people together under one roof right you get to doesn't matter what you earn your sexual orientation your religious beliefs where you're from um you know you're all under this one roof you know dancing celebrating yourself having a good time um but then to stand to be at home isolated doing it is a bit weird so maybe that's where the disconnect comes from and maybe in some respects especially some of the platforms are just asking people to donate and this money gets sent to like a you know a community fund but some people are obviously doing it so they can supplement their income that they've lost from the gigs that they've done. And if you're an avid, you know, dance music fan, you would know that a lot of these artists get paid, you know, a lot to play these big festivals and these big clubs. So it's quite hard to have sympathy with somebody that's, you know, gets flown around all over the place, first class sometimes, regardless it may be, and then gets paid, you know, 20 grand to play one or two hours of a set where they didn't make any of the music it's quite difficult to do and again i'm not that person to say that i you know let people make as much I, you know i'm i want people to make as much as they want uh run it up you know uh, i think we will have a part to play in society but i can imagine some people being a bit like mm, i'm not gonna waste my internet you know broadband uh data speed download whatever it may be watching someone play an empty club in somewhere in the old gate and then have them request donations you know it's a bit, you know, it's a bit much, especially when you know you might not be in a job in the next couple of weeks. But yeah, perfectly oh. decent thing to do, I guess, for some people. Like to to I know some some people had dancers on stage. That was a bit weird. Um, but yeah, the live streaming thing, I'm just not too sure how that works. Which is probably why, as much as people kind of brag on. Like you know, just seeing some. Uh, I guess you have to you have to try and be. A, the good thing about Defected is that they have a big roster of DJs who kind of do the whole tech house, deep house thing. So they have all the people that kind of put their hands in the air and spin around and shit. And they're all you know they're quite. Uh, they're, they're not, for lack of a better term, 
they're all performers they kind of know how to entertain behind the decks um uh they're not kind of like you know the macabre or like serious you know um you know berlin kind of kind of seeing people they're a little bit more happy clappy um which is, kind of lends itself to this sort of platform but part of the reason why boiler room works even though people rag on it is because you get to see the audience right those boiler room sort of like compilation videos they make of people you know acting weird on the dance floor doing dumb things or bumming into the mixer they're fun because that's just an everyday night that's an everyday weekend to some people so just to see someone doing their decks is a little bit mm, a little bit weird so um but then i understand again for the festival for the people that are hosting the thing especially if you've got i guess if you've got your own club and you've already paid the rent i don't know a year in advance or something and you've already got the event booked up you've paid a deposit for people to come over or you paid them in advance it might be beneficial just to kind of throw the, the you know put a webcam in front of the decks and just kind of get them to play why not um but again you know social distancing you know eliminating kind of social gatherings has kind of gone out the window because i'm sure you know with these big djs there's probably 10 handlers around them a group of kind of you know hangers on and groupies it's not as if they're just turning up there on their own in it so yeah that's one approach to it so let's continue um you can check that out yourself if you want to see it it's on you know the defective youtube channel um next news on there you've got the welsh festival free rotation has been postponed until 2021 we're seeing a lot of that happening i'm assuming some of the ones that are gonna some of the festivals that are happening in like june july august they're already trying to bump pump the brakes and saying look we're off come back next year which kind of makes you think what, what what's the english premier league doing there was a statement that came out for the English Premier League saying, oh, we want to get everything started when, I think, the was it the 14th of April or something, which is really optimistic, or even the end of April, super optimistic. They said they want to get people back into training, which doesn't make any sense really, innit? but I guess in terms of the rules, they're aware that by the end of, I think the, the rules say the Premier League has to kind of end or wrap up. Is it the end of June, right? Things should be end of June because that's when the transfer window opens at the 1st of July, I think. So they have to effectively have the season finished by the end of June. So they're trying to rush everything before then. Um, which I think, you know, if everything works out well, I'm sure the players wouldn't mind playing, you know, nine games back to back because they're probably all itching to kick a ball again. But in terms of actual, you know, safety, especially for the people that are going and especially not even for the players, more so for the people that are just supporting them, you know, physios and club staff, training ground people, caterers and all that sort of stuff. It's probably not the wise thing to do. And I just don't think it's possible because, you know, if Coachella is cancelling their event, which, you know, has a million corporate sponsors, maybe it's, maybe not on par with the football, don't get me wrong, but it's a it, 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 it does include a lot of stakeholders. If they're cancelling their thing, I don't think the Premier League has any way of kind of making sure people get back to training by April or start playing again by May. It's not going to happen at all. Um, then you've got next year, you've got Leon Festival, Noir Sonoir. What's that? How do you call that? Noir Sonoris. I have you pronounced that. Has been postponed until 20. Has been postponed until what? July, right? No, has, has postponed its 2020 edition from May through the, May 19th to the 24th until July. So they're going to push it back to July and see what happens, which is, you know, kind of sensible. I think a lot of these festivals have a lot of money tied up in insurance and you know they don't want to get penalized by the company because i'm sure some of the insurance companies are not going to be very forgiving about these natural events kind of canceling canceling the parties they're just going to be like look pay us we don't give a shit so they probably want to make sure that they kind of keep postponing it in the hope that it does go through um because i guess because some of the i've, I've kind of thinking that like, even if you do if you're even if you're able to kind of secure a license or to kind of you're kind of able to postpone your event until july it doesn't necessarily guarantee anyone's going to turn up, right? There's going to be a big, there's going to be obviously a, a huge segment of the population that's going to be like, you know what, time to celebrate, time to get happy, time to get drunk. But there's also going to be a population of people who are going to be like, you know what, I don't trust this announcement, everything is fine just yet, I'm going to wait off because some of the reactions, especially to some of the countries, or the UK has been suffered from it a lot, there's been a little bit of hesitancy to kind of really attack it and prevent the spread as it's cap as it's happening in other places so if you're a cautious person why would you then believe suddenly the government when they say everything is fine and just go out straight away you probably would hold off a little bit right you'd be like you know what? i'm not gonna rush in there just yet it's sort of like the an analogy is like you know if you go to a house party or you go to like a shindig in a kind of white collar you know a white collar event 
you're not going to be the, you don't want to be the first person running to the buffet table right you don't want to be the first person trying to grab the hors d'oeuvres off this young girl's hand as she's walking around into the, the room you kind of want to observe the room see who's around make sure you don't make a prat of yourself and let somebody else kind of look like the animal and then you kind of swoop in you know 20 minutes 30 minutes later i think it's the same sort of thing so some of these events I guess in their defense, they'll be like, you know what? It's better we take in some money than no money, right? Because, you know, they obviously do, some of them make a lot of money through their brand sponsorship, but a lot of the revenue comes from people who actually come in, buy merch, uh, buy food, buy drinks. But you need people coming in there. So even if it's half of the people who they confirm to come, it's better than nothing, I would assume. So because I'm assuming when you cancel it, you're probably spending money to kind of get out litigation or that sort of shit. So um next we've got la-based live talent agency paradigm lays off 100 people out of about 700 staff bloody hell that is a madness what is paradigm is that like a I'm not too sure what paradigm is actually that is crazy but that, that again is something you're going to see happening quite often i guess for the clubs as well it's going to be sad because the more expendable staff are the ones that actually hold them together like i'm assuming you know the bar staff the security or maybe not security because they're quite important they're going to always have a job there but you know maybe maintenance people all that sort of stuff they're obviously going to go and they're just going to recycle new people in and sometimes i think we've seen it especially in some of the kind of bigger clubs in london most of the times the reason why the vibe is off in places is because they sometimes cycle through employees too quickly or they dump them or they don't look after them and they don't realize that's how part of the reason why their place is successful you know if you look at an or Y, i don't know maybe it's not a good example but imagine they had a really interesting group of people working behind the bar cool people who happen to be you know the new hip kids on the scene that id magazine was featuring and shit and you suddenly then kick them all out because you want to move on or they because they're demanding too much of you and they want more money and you get other kids in suddenly your place isn't as cool as them though because you didn't know that even though you've got sick lineups right and you do all the best promotion and you spend a lot of money on facebook ads the actual people that are actually moving and either an actual kind of influencing culture are these kids who you know who kind of have five thousand followers on instagram yeah those are the ones that are actually doing stuff for you so with this whole virus stuff those are the first people that are going to get left behind or going to get kicked out or going to get you know uh, jobs get taken away from them and they club owners will think that are oh, they're replaceable i can just get someone else in to serve a drink but it's not really about the serving of the drink it's about who's behind the bar who's what the vibe is about why all that sort of stuff is important it's kind of the intangibles uh but again um it to, to say there's not going to be any victims or any kind of uh collateral damage is you know impossible so that's probably part of it but yeah big up those people man 100 people who had a job like you know a couple of months ago and now kind of scrambling around looking for something and the bad thing about those kind of gigs as well is that some of the times especially those kind of i guess it depends if you want to if you want to stake a claim in the music industry i guess it's cool but if you just happen to stumble into the job it probably doesn't serve your cv well to go from there to somewhere else no one really you know what i mean it's it's those weird jobs that don't really resonate well on paper so you get let go from a talent agency somewhere and you try and get you know a, a gig somewhere at coca-cola and they don't necessarily recognize it because they don't see they don't necessarily have an idea of what you did right i did an activation i handed out some tote bags it doesn't really resonate well because they just view it as some little fluffy duffy thing that anyone can do from their bedroom which might be true but you know again like you kind of want to stay in that place for a while or at least allow yourself to build a reputation so that if you're imagine the co-founder of paradigm moves and sets up his own or division in a coca-cola he can then poach that talent into coca-cola build them in, and you can get that corporate experience that kind of real you know black and white experience to kind of take it another way so sometimes getting those kind of jobs kind of can be a bit of a poison chalice because you you're only limited to working in that little niche industry of course if you want to do that it's fine but I've usually found those kind of places are great for the clout, but then also not good for the career aspirations because they can't limit your scope in it. And then finally here, we've got Tokyo Club Vent closes until April the 10th as well. So loads of um, casualties here. We have, um, what's and then for March 22nd, we have another one here, just quickly, send to the UK's decision. Uh, on Friday, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison has announced a shutdown of nightclubs, bars and pubs, restaurants and many other non-essential services across the country. Um, any non-essential domestic travel is being strongly discouraged with Queensland, South Australia, Western Australia and Tasmania effectively closing their borders to travellers from other states. So yeah, everyone's kind of feeling it and I've seen a lot of people say, oh, 
it's going to be amazing when everything reopens again it's going to be the part of the central this sort of stuff i think yeah in one sense but in the other sense as well it's probably going to be really weird it's going to be a lot of like doom and gloom people have kind of you know essentially been had their whole lives ripped apart from underneath their feet are going to still be feeling the pain and to go out and celebrate and get drunk probably not the first thing that's going to be on their mind and as well who's to say governments might not just enforce this non-essential policy uh for like you know months years to come maybe they might say or you know they might kind of limit the amount that they have in the, in the city like just because you know they can say look we can probably get away with having five weatherspoons and a couple independent bars and still make the same amount and not have the hassle of having police called quote unquote these independent or these kind of underground places um there's a lot of unanswered questions but again people's safety is obviously the main thing you don't want people dying you don't want people getting ill you don't want families being devastated the you know the enjoyment of people going out and out it's the most important thing but just from just this conversation i can definitely see a lot of things not really returning to how they are ever again possibly and it probably could be for the best you never know it could be like you know people might be a bit more appreciative and respectful of the places they have and you know um back the events that they like and support the places that they support places they like and not give any game to the people they don't like all that sort of good stuff could happen but i don't know man i'm a bit dubious on that fact because i just think people can you know sometimes get caught in a groove caught in the thing that they do all the time and just continue doing it so that's probably not the best way but who knows